Hey, my name is Alexa Mead, and I'm a painter. And this is one of my paintings. However, this isn't a painting of a man on canvas. This is a painting of a man directly on top of a man. What I'm doing with my art is skipping the canvas altogether, and I'm reapproaching um, the medium of painting. Instead of creating a painting on a canvas, a surface that's separate from the actual object, I'm painting my paintings as a reinterpretation of the object on top of the object. And I get a lot of questions about this, one of which is, <laughs> well, <laughs> He has a lot of questions, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One of which was, how did I end up becoming a model? And um, there's a lot of different ways. And who says I'm not looking for models right now? And another question I get is, how much does it tickle to get paint in your ears? And the answer to that is, a lot. <laughs> um, other questions I get are, where did you go to art school? How did you learn to paint like this? And how did you come up with this idea? Well, you should know that I studied government, not art. I have no formal training as either a painter or photographer. And I taught myself how to paint through this process of inventing this whole new technique for painting. Now, my original inspiration for this project did not come from the idea of painting people. It came from the idea of painting shadows. I was fascinated by shadow, the absence of light, and how could I give it presence, materiality, and form. So I started taking black paint and putting it on individual blades of grass to paint shadows under objects. After experimenting with painting grass, I thought, well, what if I put shadows on people where their shadows naturally were? It was a little interesting. And then one day, I decided, what if in addition to black paint, I added in some white paint? And I just covered the person to mimic the way the light fell on their body. I was astounded by the results. This was one of my very first paintings. And I had no idea what was going on here. How did this happen? So I decided that I had something here that was worth exploring. However. I didn't feel comfortable exploring it with live human models sitting there fidgeting, wondering when they could next go to the bathroom. So I decided to be kind and practice on subjects that wouldn't complain. I scoured through the kitchen for whatever I could find to paint on, and I learned a lot in this process. I not only taught myself how to paint and how to paint in full color and how to paint in this way that compressed three-dimensional space into two dimensions, I also learned that it was nearly impossible to paint a grapefruit. And you should know that it wasn't impossible because of the colors or the shape. It was impossible because paint will physically not stick to the citrus in a grapefruit. The acid just burned through it. So my solution to that was um, to go to my parents' bathroom and steal a can of hairspray and just spray the hell out of this grapefruit. I sprayed the grapefruit, and then I applied paint on top of it. It still started burning through, but I was able to finish in time before it all dissolved to snap the photo. I also learned in the process of painting the egg on toast that it's a really disgusting combination <laughs> having acrylic paint with runny egg yolk. Because several times when I tried to attempt it, I accidentally broke the yolk, and it was just completely ruined. And that toast also. I didn't realize that toast was just a giant sponge. Every time I thought I had it painted, I would look back, and then all the paint had sunk to the bottom. It looked like I hadn't even touched it. Um, my parents also learned a lot in this process, too. <laughs> They, they didn't really like the idea that I had taken over the laundry room and I was using the ironing board as my little paint workstation right next to where they fold our clean laundry. They also didn't like that they would leave work in the morning and have a fruit bowl. They'd come home from work and they'd have a painting of a fruit bowl. <laughs> so I decided it was time to move on from painting on fruit and inanimate objects. And I decided to turn to um, painting it on people. I looked around for models. It was really hard to come by. Not too many people want to have paint worked in their ears. So I decided to paint on myself. And I realized that by creating this one painting in three-dimensional space, I could photograph it from any number of angles. It was no longer stuck to a canvas. There wasn't one privileged viewpoint. It was something living, breathing, and dynamic. I could change facial expressions and have this whole range of emotions from one painting. And also, mind you, there's no Photoshop or anything added after the effect. After, um, after the photo is snapped. It all happens before the camera. So I realized I had something here with three-dimensional painting. And now how do I bring this to people? How do I convince people this is something that's actually happening? Because when I showed them photos, it was hard for them to believe what their eyes were telling them otherwise. Um, so I decided to find a congested place where I could bring a model. And my solution was the tube. 
I painted a man and I took him on the subway. It was quite an experience and um, it was also quite a risky move. But I oftentimes think of one of my favorite quotes, and I'm going to paraphrase it, that without risking the ridiculous, artists never get anywhere beyond the pre-validated and familiar. Now, I studied political science. I'd interned on Capitol Hill for four summers. I was a senior press staffer on the Obama campaign. And I'd carved out a very neat, nice little path for myself in politics. However, when I graduated from college, I took the risk that instead of finding a job, I would find myself in my parents' laundry room, hairspraying grapefruits. And now, this was quite an unconventional path. But I really believed in what I was doing. And I thought that I had something here. And I kept pushing. And I took more risks. And I was just looking to explore this unfamiliar area and see what would happen. I wasn't at first starting out to create a masterpiece. I had no idea that this would take me here. And I have no idea where this will take me tomorrow or farther into the future. But I'm still willing to look for what is unfamiliar. Now, you guys have become familiar with the photos of my artwork. But it's much more than just the photographic documentation. It's also the in-person experience, the performance. And so today, I'm actually going to paint for you.
Thank you. Thank you.